pleased to have at the Nyberg table, Adrian Broom. Thank you so much for yeah, being on. Yeah, thank you on. for having me. A photographer extraordinaire. Well, let's just start out saying that about you. Um, <laughs> you do photography, which caught my eye, which is a kind of fantasy. But before we get to that, how did you become a photographer and why? So we may have to go back to your childhood. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've always been interested in storytelling, and it's always had kind of a fantastical twist. Um, since a kid? Since a kid. Even when I was younger, I remember drawing these kind of cartoon-like stories of, you know, these elaborate court situations with, like, the queens and, you know, their ladies-in-waiting, and then there would be these whole, like, storylines. I found some of them, like, three or four years ago, which was kind of amazing. So from there, um, college I did animation, which I loved, like, 3D animation. But small short films? Small short films, kind of mostly learning the software, because 3D animation, it's part sculpture kind of on the screen and then part lighting and then you actually move these sculptures that you make mm -hmm. and it's it's very different from the you know line by line animation drawing and I loved it but it just you were in front of the computer all day long and I started to feel a little nuts so well right because you're just it's a yeah tight I like squeeze kind of being in it so this yeah. now is kind of a good medium between that because I, I build these actual worlds, but I build them with my hands, and then I can interact with them and tell stories almost in the same way, but it's just... When did you pick up the camera? And did you start out doing weddings like so many people no, do? No, it, um, it was it was kind of random. I went through um, a pretty bad heartbreak, as we all do, and um, some very good friends of mine were in a band, and I hadn't gotten out of bed for like a month, and they said, Adrian, you know, enough is enough, like, let's go get out of bed, come on the road with us, you can sell merch, you can take pictures, you can do whatever you want to do. And I was like, I'll take pictures. <laughs> and I remember the, one of the first shows where I was in the little pit and I was taking pictures and I, I like forgot about my personal drama, you know, and I just kind of got lost in the moment. And it was just that kind of first spark of happiness that you get when you're coming out of a hard time. And it was incredible. And then I just haven't stopped because I've been so lucky to find that thing that I personally connect with so much that, you know, it does save me. Anytime I'm going through a hard time, I throw myself into my work. something else. And it, it, I don't know, I just connect with it. So I'm lucky that I, I found it. Well, you brought it up. Um, you started something called the Color Project. Yes. Why? And that goes back to what, 2000 what? Um, oh God. A long time. Yeah, a long time. So you decided to do something with color. Yes. So or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. Yeah. So I started off, um, I was at a friend's house who was about to have her first baby, and she was doing the nursery, and everything was white. So it was like white crib, white rocking table or chair and, you know, dressing table, and everything was white, and I just thought it was so beautiful. And then it was just such a simple seed of an idea that I was like, I should build a world where everything's white. And then maybe after another cup of coffee, I was like, I should build a world where everything's red, and then the whole rainbow, I should Green just do this. And, yeah. yeah. Well, let's look at white. <coughs> this isn't just uh, any picture. There's a lot going on here. When you built this, first of all, how many people helped you put this together, so and how long did it take you? many people. Well, this particular one was the first one, and I knew that I wanted to do this project, and I knew it was gonna be very expensive. So I decided to put together a Kickstarter, and for the first one, um, a bunch of friends and very talented um, stylists donated their time so that we could put together a Kickstarter and hopefully get some money to complete the project. And I had, throughout it, I had two people, um, Kristen Meyer and Tony Palmieri, who I've Brett just met through, met through random walks of life, um, helped me with this whole project. But so they got it. They got they it. They got what you were trying to do. They were my constants. But then people would just contact me and say, I need like an arts and crafts outlet or I need, you know, to do something creative, can I come in and help? And so I had tons of different people coming in and out throughout the course so of the project. So that was shoestring yeah. on that one, uh, outside uh, of the Kickstarter. Yes. yes. You, you get this out there, this thing all in white, mm -hmm. uh, and what are the comments coming back to you? Um, people were just kind of excited. A lot of people wanted to know if it was Photoshop or how I work and uh -huh. what I try to do in all my work 
is build everything outside instead of compositing it. It's just, I personally like the way it comes together. I like the way that it can be a little bit more spontaneous. So you don't draw it first. You just start putting stuff together like a retail shop? I do draw it first. I usually have a sketch out of like what I want. I knew that this was going to be a girl's bedroom and there was going to be a magical tree growing here and that everything was going to be white. We brought in the bunnies. Um, I worked with a baker who owns Spellbound Desserts. I think she's in Avon. I know Avon. her. She's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so she did all of the cakes for the whole series. Wow. It's amazing, which is delicious. All right, yeah. you went from white to the next one. Yes. And the color is red. Yes. Um, what, what are we doing here? What is well, this? Well, we covered the, the ceiling with um, balloons. Because the story goes that this little girl wakes up in her room and all the colors have disappeared and everything has been replaced with what's supposed to be white so as she goes from world to world the next world everything is red so everything in this picture from the ceiling full of balloons to stop signs to a field of poppies which is what's on the right to this red phone booth which weighed like five tons and we had to haul it into and my studio. And where did you find that? I rent a lot of stuff from Goodspeed Prop oh, and which... Costume who are the They're amazing. people that work there and yeah. the stuff they have, it's, it's one of my favorite places on the planet. Um, so all of these props are from them. And it, I mean, I think they probably had fun working with me on it too. Because I'd be like, I need everything you have that's red. All right, so red gets out there and people are saying, oh, I get it. She's going to do a whole color palette. That's, mm -hmm. that's what Adrienne Broom's going to be about. Mm -hmm. And then is this orange or yellow? What, or this one's orange. Um, and I was just kind of picturing an enchanted forest where... The kind of mushrooms are actually lamps that bring off this kind of orange light. And How then, did you have to light that to take that picture? Um, well, with all the lamps. We shot a lot of the time at night, so that um, these were all shot in my studio in New Haven in Erector Square. Um, and there's a lot of extension cords under all, of, <laughs> all, uh, all the fake leaves that we cut. And then the that next one. world that she goes into. Well, this one is actually this one. Oh, it is. It's just kind of a behind the scenes of oh, what it okay. looks like in the studio. So behind right. her, the whole point was there is a, um, a tree house in this kind of autumn forest, this enchanted autumn forest. How many hours does it take you to put this together? Um, it usually took, yeah, definitely days. days. And the sourcing takes a very long time for all the props. This is one of my favorite ones. This was um, this yellow. was yellow. And um, we printed out the background, so I didn't Photoshop in the background. These are huge prints that we printed. We got all this hay, all these actual beautiful sunflowers. Um, Tony was a florist, so he had connections to wholesale flowers, which is amazing. Um, yeah, there's a lot of hay in my studio. The people in Erector Scrows used to joke, saying, I wonder what she's doing this week or this month, because there would just be trails of whatever color I was working whatever on. Whatever we're doing on. We go from yellow to green. Mm -hmm. And um, this is? So this was supposed to be more of a, a jungle situation. And we built this pond in my studio with tarps and bricks and a hose. Um, getting it all out was really fun too. But um, yeah, this is her in the jungle. Now this, uh, and then we have, uh, this is taking on, this isn't blue, right? This is a this whole is blue. Yeah, oh, this yeah, is yeah, blue. This is blue, yeah, yeah, this one's okay. blue. Um, I loved this blue. It had to be, you know, on the bottom of the ocean. So, and I wanted her to be interacting. So she's actually in school, like in a school of fish. So she's learning for the day. And this is the school of fish that's circling around her. And she's learning um, blueprints from the octopus. So I wanted it to be kind of playful and now, childlike. Now, this whole series, The Color Project, you're going to put this into a book somehow. A children's book. Um, it was actually that. accepted by the American Art Alliance, and it's going to go on tour around the states for about five years as a family-friendly. Yeah, as a family-friendly exhibition. Um, so the pictures are really big, and when the kids come in, they get these lists of all the stuff they have to find in each photograph. Um, and there's also videos that show us building the things, and it's kind of it's a little interactive. And I'm in the middle of pitching it as um, a children's book that would also, you know, be available throughout the tour. How about a coloring book? Coloring book would be awesome too. I think that that would be. I think that amazing. would be very cool. Actually. So it, it's still having life. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to go on. It's still kicking, which is really cool. It's amazing to see kind of how these projects, yeah, take on their own life and where they go. But a book has always been 
you know, my goal for this project. Okay. Some other photos that we have. Um, you like to do things with animals. I do. Is that a real animal? It is. This is a Ray of Light Farm in East Haddam, Connecticut. They're a rescue farm where you can go and you can meet this zonkey, which is half zebra, half donkey. I think her name is Fancy Pants or something, <laughs> which is amazing. But she's on site and this bunny is on site and I built this there. Um, wow. They're the most wonderful organization. Um, they rescue all these animals and do like um, military vet programs with PSD, like helping you know take care of the animals. And where is a photo like this going to go? It's going to. Well, it's you're selling prints. I'm selling prints. So photos like this, um, I just make for my own personal artwork. And then when I have exhibitions or shows, mm -hmm. they are on view and for sale. The lighting in that is is dynamite. Thank you. We go from that to something very different. Yes. Um, another project I did is I spent about a year and a half doing a project called Envy and Fairy Tales. Um, I was working with the Hudson River Museum and they were part of seven different museums that were doing the seven deadly sins. And they asked me to do Envy in Fairy Tales. So I went through all of, I mean, there's so much. Um, this, for example, is Snow White um, sleeping in her coffin. Um, this, <laughs> this was an interesting shoot. It was pretty cold, and we filled the water with, um, or filled the tank with water and kept trying to like refill it with hot water. The model was amazing and actually got in. But, um, so she's underwater. Yeah, she's underwater in here. And wow. this was part of um, that whole series. We did, you know, the whole storyboard of Snow White and six other stories as well, all built in a little box, basically, in my studio. So when people hear the name Adrian Broom, what do they think of? Right away, they they grab you to do what? Um, I guess you'd say whimsical narratives, um, in a way. I I I think that's kind that's of where it. you're headed. You think, or that's where yeah. you're at, that's where you're at since you were a little yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. This last photo I love. Um, where did you do this? So this was actually um, a commissioned portrait, which I do a lot of as well. These are two sisters, and they were starting. Um, I think this was for a perfume line they were doing. And they asked if I would do a whimsical portrait of them. Right and up your so, alley. Yeah, so we did this on the beach. Um, I had one assistant, and um, this is one of my favorite portraits. So did you tell them to wear what they're wearing? No, no, no. I, I, I usually supply all the costumes and the okay. art direction. And all right, so all you get a lot does. when you call up Adrian Broom. Yeah. <laughs> so all of this going on, now you're working on another project, and it's called yes. Being. Being, yes. And it was, sh it's, and we're going to show a video of it in a moment, but where was it shot? How did you set this up, and what is the point behind Being? Um, so it originally started because I had access to this incredible location in northern England called Wentworth Woodhouse, which is where the video I think you're going to show is from. Um, a friend of a friend's family owned it. I finally got up the courage to ask if I could do an art project there, and they were very open and willing. Um, and the project kind of started there. I wanted to take women that inspire me and put them in these historical houses and kind of add an element um, of whimsy, but it, it's usually, there's three elements. There's the house, there's the subject, and then there's a light source. And in some of the images, I created the light source with a dress where I sewed thousands of little LED lights into these outfits. And then in other images, it's a very kind of aggressive light source coming out of some more that's like interacting with the scene. Um, since then, I've expanded and I've shot at the Florence Griswold Museum Historical House in Lyme. Um, I shot at one of those old plantations outside New Orleans. Um, I've shot at a historical house in Brooklyn. I'm hoping to shoot at the, the glass house in New Canaan, which I think would be amazing. Um, so it's kind of a work in progress and it's evolving as I go. I think when I started, I didn't have an idea where it was going to go. and. Um, I was just excited about that first shoot and then the next one and the next one and now it's kind of actually taken form into an actual project. All right, let's see the video so we can show folks.
wow, that dress. A thousand cool. LED lights you, you just sewed into a dress. Yeah, and they would randomly turn on and off, which was really fun in production. Now, you did this with three people, but you were behind the camera. I was behind the camera, um, and I did the lighting and the directing. So, I mean, it was, it was a really cool experience. It was my sister, who is the model in the glowy dress, my best friend from college who came on last minute. was like, what are you guys doing? Can I come help? And I stuck her in that black suit and then my boyfriend who just kind of helped move everything around and make it work so it was just us in this massive house creating this body of work for about two weeks when people see that wh what do they say oh gosh i'd like to use a piece of that for a commercial or um, do do? i mean what do, what do they say about it yeah well there's been some interest in me working on more music videos which i love i was just gonna go there I love that idea. I love the idea with collaborating with musicians again, because that's kind of where I started. And now doing it a little bit, you know, in a different realm, I think that would be amazing. So there's talk of that. There's always, um, you know, the commercial part, which, mm -hmm. you know, I'm interested in as long as, you know, they're coming to me because they like what I do. You don't um, want to be told what to do. Well, I'm, I'm happy with collaboration, but I don't think anyone would hire me to do like a crest TV commercial. Yeah, no, it wouldn't make sense. No, they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I, I, it was really interesting because my, my work is so narrative and finally being able to have it move and watch it move was really exciting. So I have a couple other projects coming up with this being project in um, these different historical houses. We're going to shoot, you know, small little short films in each one along with the, the stills. And then so. I would have a publicist send them to every single, you know, artist that sings yeah. in the country and just, and just see what happens. Yeah. Um, this far down the road of you doing what you're doing, are you happy with how you've evolved? Yeah. I mean, you always want, you know, you always want to evolve more, but I'm, I think if I looked when I started off to think that this is what I'd be doing now, I would have no idea. So it's really fun to kind of have the path unfold because I'm, I'm definitely not planned out in exactly where I want my you know, career or my art to be in five years. So it's exciting to You're just, just kind of see yeah, where you end up. What kind of a camera do you shoot with? Canon. And is it huge, small? No, I shoot with a 5D. Um, and it also does film, or film, it also does video. Right. So um, I love it. I started off, my dad shoots Canon, and I, he kind of, kind of used to inherit his old ones. So it kind of just fell into it, but I love them. Adrian Broom, thanks so much for bringing your artistic ability thank to the show. Thank you for having me. And I can't wait to see what Being does next. Me too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Spend all night kissing and it wanders right here Then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution And find the keys to the door But it's also a metaphor Things keep dark in the grocery store But mine, just the same time Skip right ahead to the last ride